In a world of VGC where metas are dominated by a select few Pokemon, it's really hard for the lesser renowned ones, the underdogs if you will, to see the same type of success, especially in a bigger tournament. But every now and again you might tune into a regional or another huge tournament and hear the casters hyping up an underused Pokemon being used by a player that's doing pretty well. If you're used to seeing the same Pokemon battle it out, there's a sense of wonder and excitement in seeing that Pokemon hit the field on stream. And screen tails, it hits tail. the field. And be piloted expertly to play exactly the part it's meant to. It's captivating, it's motivational. It's a huge part of what inspired this series. Welcome to Community Chaos. Hi, I'm TGH. I'm an aspiring VGC player who started playing in February of 2023. I decided to create Community Chaos for two reasons. One, to help improve myself as a player and as a team builder in the competitive Pokemon scene. And two, to try and show you that with enough creativity and with the right strategy, almost any Pokemon can do well, or at least well enough to be fun. In this series, I take Pokemon chosen by you, the community, build a team around them, and try to win games with them on the in-game ranked ladder. So be sure to comment down below with your choice on what I should use next. I have some self-imposed rules for the challenge that are down below in the description, and as always, there are timestamps or chapters in the video so that you can skip ahead to the games if you want to. If you enjoy this video, I'd super appreciate giving it a like and subscribing as it lets me know you want to see more of Community Chaos. Now, let's take a look at the team I've built for this week's episode. I once again held a community poll from the choices in the comments last week, and thank you very much for voting, everybody. And the winner was Malamar. Okay, here's the team. So, on first glance, this team might seem a bit out there, at least on paper, but hear me out. I've got a good reason for all these Pokemon being here. First off, the Malamar. You already know why that's here. Malamar is actually a really cool Pokemon with some pretty unique tools, including a very unique typing in Dark Psychic, which it only shares with Hoopa Unbound, which has never been legal in VGC. Unfortunately, the Dark Psychic type means that it actually has zero resistances, which is pretty unfortunate. Nonetheless, the idea I have with this Pokemon is to really try and take advantage of its contrary ability and use it as a sweeper. If a Pokemon with Contrary has a stat raised, it's lowered instead, and vice versa. That's the important part. Vice versa. Combine that with Superpower, a strong fighting move that's supposed to lower the user's attack and defense, and you've got a Pokemon that can set up as it's attacking. My idea was to have a Salt Vest on it as well, to also boost its special defense and have a Pokemon that's super bulky, just dealing massive damage if you ignore it on the field if you're my opponent. Terra Steel is primarily for Fluttermane, uh, basically only for Fluttermane, but also to resist any bug type attacks that might be coming its way like U-Turn from Urshifu or Rillaboom, uh, as it does have that times four weakness to bug types normally. Knockoff is really useful in general and is also quite strong. If the Pokemon is holding an item, it gets its attack boosted by 1.5 times, essentially making a 97 power move instead of 65. Um, Psycho Cut is a higher crit rate stab move and is unfortunately really the only physical move uh, that's a Psychic type move that Malamar gets access to. And Terra Blast is absolutely 100% for Fluttermane and nothing else. It should kill even bulkier Fluttermanes, but it isn't guaranteed on one that's incredibly bulky, uh, even if it is plus zero, if it hasn't gotten a, a boost from Superpower yet. Next up, we have Weirdeer, uh, who serves a couple of roles on the team and who, and who I think makes a really, really cool partner for Malamar. The main reason is it's the only Pokemon in the entire game that gets access to Intimidate as an ability and Skill Swap as a move. A really cool scenario I can imagine on turn zero and turn one is leading with Malamar and Weirdeer getting the Intimidate off so they're at minus one attack, and then skill swapping a Pokemon on the opponent's side to self-proc an attack raise on the Malamar with Conjury. 
At 95 speed, it's exactly one point faster than the Malamar as well, so it can pull this off. This is a special attacking Weirdir as well, so it's not affected by its own skill swapped Intimidate. Although honestly, it's not really meant to attack as much as it's meant to support Melamar with the Intimidate skill swap combo and with Trick Room against particularly fast teams. We can flip the speed tiers around on them. Psychic does KO Urshifu Rapid Strike, however, if it doesn't Terra. And I thought Uproar was a neat addition since the team is a bit weak to Amoongus and Uproar prevents all Pokemon on the field from sleeping. It's also a pretty strong normal type special stab move for it as well. Although it does get locked into it for, I think it's two, it's uh, three turns. Yeah, it does get locked, to it, locked into it for three turns. So I do have to be careful with using it. Uh, Clefairy is back, and this time with Friend Guard. How about that? Last time I used Clefairy, I had Cute Charm on it by accident, and I didn't realize it until after I uploaded and was watching it back on YouTube. So, go me, but this time we actually have Friend Guard on it, so we can utilize that. Clefairy, I think, is a great piece for a team like this with the Friend Guard, as well as Redirection next to Malamar and others, uh, which we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, while they get big attacks off and Helping Hand to help make those attacks stronger. Terra Grass is for extra Amoongus protection and it works well to cover for a lot of weaknesses for our next Pokemon too, Registeel. I need a Pokemon that could deal with Fluttermane. Basically, that's the reason Registeel is here and, you know, without having to commit to a Terra on something else. Registeel not only was the first one to come to mind, but also I think just fits really, really well here. Intimidate, Redirection, Fake Out, Grassy Terrain, uh, the latter two, which we will get to in a little bit as well. <laughs> uh, even just a couple of these tools make for an environment Registeel can flourish in. I've got just enough attack investment at 76 to kill a bulkier Fluttermane with Heavy Slam, and the rest of the investment is just all in bulk to really take advantage of where this Pokemon shines. Iron Defense plus Body Press is absolutely devastating if you let this Pokemon stay on the field for very long, and it just becomes extremely hard to remove. Next up we have Rillaboom. Rillaboom made a lot of sense to add for the Fake Out and Grassy Terrain recovery tools that it does provide for the rest of the team. Uh, and also as another way to deal with Fluttermane as Woodhammer just obliterates it in Grassy Terrain. This one's got Miracle Seed as well instead of Assault Vest, which is why it's Terra Poison to deal with Fluttermane a little bit better. A lot run Terra Fire defensively, but I also want to be able to deal with Urshifu while terra uh, at the same time in the same game, which is why I went Poison instead of Fire. Last but not least, we have Urshifu. For this slot, I really wanted a fast water type to help deal with fire types like Entei, Chiyu, etc. Mostly Entei. Uh, enter Choice Scarf Urshifu. Kind of a classic, honestly. Uh, Terra Water with Surging Strikes, Close Combat, U-Turn, Aqua Jet. Urshifu is really, really nice to have next to Clefairy as well, who can reduce the damage it takes, as well as Helping Hand to get off huge damage with Surging Strikes or Close Combat, or redirect the damage away. Okay, I don't know about you, but I'm excited to try these six out and see how well they fare together in practice. Uh, let's see if they fare as well as they do in my head. Uh, before we get to the games, I just want to say be sure to comment with your choice of Pokemon for next time, as well as like, subscribe, and check out the other Community Chaos videos. Again, it really helps me out so much. I love VGC. I really enjoy producing this type of content, and it would mean a lot to me to get more eyes on it, honestly, and your support helps immensely. All right, enjoy the games, uh, or feel free to skip to the recap if you want, and I'll see you on the other side. All right, let's do this. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can win like one game with these. <laughs> I don't know. I think the idea is sound. It's just like how how good will it actually fare into like you know other teams, other like good teams. I mean. Uh, okay, we got Porygon 2, Rillaboom, Primarina, Metagross, Landorus, Therian, and Raging Bolt. Okay, um, so it's nice not having to worry about uh, Landorus. Malamar, do we have like, I guess we have Psycho Cut to hit Primarina. Um, 
They have Trick Room. They have a Trick Room mode of their own. Uh, I still like Weird Ear. Like, they only have one Pokemon on their team that is a physical attacker and doesn't care about Intimidate. That's Metagross. They have two Pokemon that, like, I can Intimidate. Um... Yeah, Primarina is like a, uh... Primarina Pre can probably hit Malamar pretty hard. Uh, and, and again, I do have to bring Malamar, so... All right, let's let's see how this works. Let's let's just bring out these four. I like Rillaboom in the last slot just for Pre Marina and uh, also for a. Uh... Yeah, I, I I just like Rillaboom in that slot. Okay, here we go. Let's see how this works. Mostly for Pre Marina. Oh, yeah, Porygon 2 and Metagross. Okay. All right, this is fine. I um, wonder if they're going to try and set Trick Room, actually. Oh, that's funny. Okay, so... Oh, that's a weird interaction. So the Porygon 2 is Trace. Um, but it traced Contrary, but, it did, but Intimidate got off before the Contrary. Okay, that's good for us. Um, you know what I do like, actually? I do like, uh, hmm. Let's see, what do we have in the... I do like attacking the Metagross right away. I kind of like this. I like Superpower on the Metagross, and we're gonna skill swap, uh... This might be funny, actually. <laughs> okay, so they're withdrawing Metagross. So, so this is weird. We're skill swapping Trace. Which, wait, can you even skill swap Trace? Maybe, yeah, you can. Okay. All right, that's good to know. You can skill swap Trace. I'm learning things. So now Porygon 2 has Intimidate. It intimidates us. Malamar gets the attack raise. Superpower is going to go into Primarina, but also give us... Even more attack and defense. And there goes Trick Room. Okay. Uh, we could reverse that if we wanted. We could. At least try to. Um... Terra Steel is actually, like, pretty nice here. What do they have in the back? Potentially. They might have Lando. They might have... I don't know if they'd have Lando here. Probably Bolt if they brought their Trick Room mode. Uh, I kind of like Terra Steel. I like Terra Steel and... <laughs> um, I kind of like bringing in Clefairy here as well. Let me do this and we bring in Clefairy just for a little bit of extra... A uh, little bit of extra defense. So this Malamar is actually pretty close already to being in, like, a really, really good spot. I don't care about reversing Trick Room. I really don't. So there's Terra Steel. Just to avoid, like, a Moonblast coming in from, uh, from, from Primarina. Oh, they went for Hyper Voice. Okay. Ice Beam into the Clefairy is fine. Oh, okay. is it sa No, it can't be sashed. There's no way. No. That, okay, so we can, we can like, just kind of off that with Clefairy if we want to. Um... I'm kind of a fan of Psycho Cut into the Pre-Marina. Like, I'm convinced at this point there's nothing the Pre-Marina can hit with because we are again we are a salt vest malamar which is really nice um yeah i like i like this yep porygon 2 is gone 
Uh, if they go for Hyper Voice, it's also fine. Yeah, okay. So here comes a big, like, what, plus three Psycho Cut? Yeah, into the Primarina. That's so strong. Yep, so now I have this Malamar at plus two defense with Clefairy on the field and with Assault Vest. <laughs> the only thing that's missing is, uh... Well, actually, the only thing that's really missing is uh, Grassy Terrain Recovery, but, like, I think it's kind of too late for that. Um... They have not Terra'd. I do wonder what the Terra on Metagross is. Like, most Terra's on Metagross don't resist fighting, like, Water... Dragon, even Fairy. A oh, Fairy does resist fighting. Um, kind of like going Superpower onto the Raging Bolt. Actually, we have uh, Rillaboom in the back can like U-turn Metagross. There's not a lot Metagross can do to. Okay, yeah. Let's let's Superpower the Raging Bolt and let's. Uh, Let's follow me with Clefairy. Because neither of these Pokemon have any spread moves, right? Uh, the Raging Bolt will probably move first here. Yep, went for Thunderclap. Which is priority. Yeah, so now we have a plus three superpower coming into the Raging Bolt. If it KOs, which, like, I don't know if it will, but... Also, the Metagross does have Hammer Arm, which is a little bit of an issue. We can bring in Rillaboom now and fake out. Probably fake out the Metagross. It's Leftovers Raging. Well, that makes sense, because, like, Metagross usually runs Assault Vest. Um, yeah, I like Rillaboom here. I like Rillaboom to fake out. Now we get that grassy train recovery. Uh, I wonder if Raging Bolt. There's a good chance Raging Bolt goes for Protect with Fake Out Pressure on the fields. So I like doubling on the Metagross here, honestly. If they haven't Terra'd, they're not gonna Terra. Straight up. Um, so I like Knock Off, actually, on the Metagross and Fake Out onto the Metagross. Um. Raging Bolt's leftovers. Raging Bolt, I'm pretty sure, straight up can't KO Malamar. Yep, they did go for Protect. Okay. So Metagross is likely the Assault Vest Mon, which means we made a good choice here. And Knockout at plus three, or even, no, it's plus four, actually. It should just straight up kill it. Bye. Boom. Yeah, this is our game. All right, so uh, Malamar shown in this game. Are you kidding me? That's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, we're just gonna like. What a hammer here. Uh, Rillaboom will move first, and they're going for a Terra. Terra Grass. Okay. So, yeah, Superpower will just KO it. Alright. So, that should be game one. One. They went for Thunderclap, but I'm a Salt Vest. Wood Hammer is probably not going to KO. Not quite, but Superpower will. Okay, so Malamar got three out of four of the KOs, and the other KO went to Clefairy, which is actually really funny. But, we're 1 0 with Malamar. Assault Vest actually came in really, really clutch that game. Oh, they rage quitted. Or not, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not going to assume they rage quitted. Rage quit. Past tense of rage quit is rage quit. Um, I'm not going to assume that. But yeah, they might have just had internet problems, you know? But. <laughs> Malamar is pretty strong. I'm not going to lie. Like, I actually really like the way that felt. All right, game two. Let's see if game two goes as well. So we got Entei 
Raging Bull. Okay, this is a this is a take on D Force, I guess. Um, sort of. Yeah. Entei, Raging Bull, Chimpao, Dragonite, Ogre Pond, Wellspring, and Golden Go. What does Golden Go sub in for on the D Force team? Is it's uh it's the Rilla Rillaboom? No, Raging Bolt. No. E I'm just trying to like figure out what the letters stand for. I, let's not focus on that. Uh let's focus on what we're gonna do. Okay, so we do um uh So Intimidate doesn't exactly work on It only works on one Pokemon on this team. Can't skill swap the Golden Go. Uh I do still like Melamar. I'm not sure there's anything on this team that can hit Malamar super effectively. Yeah, like it's only uh, Bug and uh, Bug and what? I mentioned it in the in the pregame, but I straight up don't remember. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just go with the same lead. And I like Urshifu in the back, actually. Even with the Water Ogre Pond there, I like Urshifu in the back for like Entei and also for Chen Pao. Um, but I do need to, if it's Choice Scarf, yeah, I have Choice Scarf Urshifu, so I would need to, um, I'd need to tear a water probably to kill their Chen Pao. And there's Entei and Ogre Pond. So we do get the Intimidate off at least on the, uh, on the Ogre. Um, hmm. The only question is what exactly to skill swap here. And also, I might want to go for Trick Room, actually. Like, they don't have a Pokemon that's slower than Malamar on their team, except for maybe Raging Bolt. But I don't care that much about Raging Bolt if I have Clefairy in the back, so... Uh... Yeah, I like, uh, I like Super Power onto... Hmm. No, I like it onto Ogre Pond, actually. Mm. No, we'll go Entei. And we'll skill swap, uh... We'll skill swap away Inner Focus. So Ivy Cudgel goes into the Malamar for quite a bit of damage. And Sacred Fire into the Weird Ear is fine. <laughs> yeah, so now we're going to get the, yep, the proc there. Superpower is going to go into the Entei and give us a plus one in, or a plus two actually in attack. Nice crit as well. Um, Let's see, what do I like here? I don't like Trick Room anymore. Um, if I if I were gonna set Trick Room, I would have done it then. Uh, but I'm not gonna do it now. Yeah, I like this. Honestly, like. Yeah, I feel like if there's not a situation where they would they would double the Malamar, then like that's just a really good turn one and turn two. They miss Sacred Fire. Oh, that's really unfortunate. That's super unfortunate. So now the okay, the Ogre Pond's at minus one, and we're at plus two. Uh barring an Ivy Cudgel crit. Barring an Ivy Cudgel crit. Like, there's not a lot that this ogre can do to Malamar right now. We can always bring uh, Weeder back in. Like, their inner focus mon is gone. But, like, they don't... Yeah, yeah, Chen Pao. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. And also, like, gives us a really good reason to bring Weeder back in. Um, But also, I might want to just, like... Hmm... No, I like bringing Weirder back in. Like, Malamar becomes, like, nearly untouchable. 
Hmm, but now they're now now we have a we have a decision to make though, because like we could superpower the Chen Pao, but they can also Terra Ghost. Uh, we can also superpower the Ogre Pond, but they could Spiky Shield. I think I like superpowering the Ogre Pond because the biggest threat to us right now is Ivy Cultural Crit. It's a one in eight chance to crit. But I like bringing Weeder back in for the Intimidate. And superpowering Ogre Pawn. Just to make sure it can't crit us. Yep, there's Protect on the POW. They did go for Spiky. Okay, so they double protected, which is interesting. Yeah, that's fair. Like, Malamar's still in a really good position here. Um, yep, I like Superpower again onto Ogre. <laughs> maybe another skill swap here. Or maybe... No, I, I don't want to go for Trick Room. Not with my Scar version of the deck. Um, hmm. What if I skill swap my own Malamar to get another Intimidate off? I could do that if I really wanted, but I think I'll skill swap the uh, Chen Pao. Ice Skull Crash into the Malamar. <laughs> Does 31 damage. Ivy Cudgel, no crit, please. Thank you. So now we get another plus one. This is really fun. <laughs> This is actually a blast. <laughs> oh, we got flinched. Okay, it's no longer fun. I, I take it back. Um, yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, Ogre Pond would have been very gone. Mm, that's super unfortunate. Okay, I think at this point we kind of let Malamar go. Uh, do we want to? No, not. Man, with Ogre Pond gone, like the the path for Urshifu is paved, and that that sucks. That really sucks right there. Okay, fine. We'll just go Superpower again, and we'll go uh, Psych. You will double. We'll double up on the Ogre. Yeah, that really sucks, actually. Might be cudgel into the. Uh, Weirder. It's at minus two, so. Minus, but it's with Chen Pao on the field. All that was with Chen Pao on the field, by the way. Uh, We need to find a way to get rid of Ogre Pond. I'm, like, not opposed to just, like, bringing Urshifu and going close combat. It would make things really awkward, though, especially if they Terra Ghost Chen Pao. Man, that flinch really hurt. That flinch changed probably the outcome of this match. We got a little bit unlucky there. Um, let's see. Well, neither of these Pokemon have spread. Okay, yeah, I kind of like bringing Clefairy in here, actually. We can redirect. Hmm. I might go for Uproar, honestly. Uproar is probably a two-hit on Ogre Pond from this range. Uh, I might just redirect and click Uproar a bunch. Like, I need Ogre Pond gone. I need Ogre Pond gone badly. Um, we just follow me, and... Yeah, we follow me Uproar. Just to get some damage on Chen Pao, because, like... Okay, this is fine. Protect on Chen Pao is fine. Uproar onto Dragonite probably won't do a ton. Also, yeah, since they have Dragonite in the back, like, this is probably... This is probably game for them. 
Honestly, it might have been game for them even if uh, even if I didn't get to flinch that turn. <laughs> yeah, like there's there's not a lot else we can do right now. Um, yeah, there's Terra Normal, incoming probable extreme speed, I guess. Onto the Clefairy, which does die. Okay. Yeah, that, that flinch just changed the outcome of the entire game. Yeah, okay. Oh, I will say that I haven't... Like, yeah, the, the problem is, though, they still have Ogre Pond in the back and they can just win. So I probably have to lock in the close combat, which is not good at all. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever. We'll just we'll do it. I wonder if they'd switch here. The problem is they can reposition Dragonite. Yeah, it's like they can reposition Dragonite to come in after I'm like minus whatever, and also they're just gonna they're just gonna end the fight right now. Yeah, so that was a little bit unfortunate. But honestly, with Dragonite in the back, unless we were able to force a Terra, I don't... I'm not sure there was any avenue to victory anyway. Because they could have just as easily not terra and just kept their Dragon typing. Wait, did that really not kill? Oh, I guess they are minus two. What, what are they? Minus a uh, well, minus one. All right, well, ended up being, you know, not a, uh, <laughs> at least on paper, not a blowout. Because we did, Urshfu did get two knockouts there. Yeah, with Ogre Pond in the back, I couldn't lock into Surging Strikes. Anyway, anyway, them's the breaks. Them's the breaks. Yeah, that, uh, I can't stress enough how much that flinch, uh, change the game though like again i'm not sure if we with with since they had dragon in the back i'm not sure if we had an avenue there but yeah it could have very well been different though all right here we go game three game three we have blastoise urshifu probably urshifu dark hmm, actually it could be water yeah this is a rain team uh urshifu whatever type it is raging bolt Caliper, Tornadus, and Flutterman. Okay, so like, honestly, that Urshifu is probably water. Uh, they're probably trying to take as much advantage of rain as they possibly can. Uh, which means I probably do want to bring my... Oh, uh, do I want to bring my own Urshifu? Like, they have like a bunch of good Urshifu answers, including Flutterman. Um, either way, I think, honestly, like... Blastoise is a special tech. Uh, is it... I don't even know what Blastoise is. Is it special or is it physical? I think it's special. Yeah, on, I'm, I'm not going to claim to know what Blastoise's base stats are, to be honest with you. Uh, haven't played enough Blastoise for that. But Pelipper... Uh, I do like a Malamar lead regardless. I kind of like Malamar plus Clefairy here. Uh, besides for Bleak Wind, this team doesn't have any spread moves, I don't think. Oh, uh, actually, Dazzling. We can tear a Steel away from Dazzling, though. Uh, let's bring in Reggie Steel, and let's... You know what? We'll go Rillaboom. We'll go Rillaboom, since... Uh, yeah, yeah, enough of the... Yeah, they have enough Urshfu answers, which like will deter me from bringing mine. But i do like rillaboom to handle the the water types in general like blastoise uh can even handle pelipper probably uh assuming the urshifu's water it can handle that Fluttermane and blastoise okay so this is an immediate terra steal on malamar just to avoid dazzling gleam damage while we follow me with uh with clefairy um hmm could go terra steal terra blast right away on the flutter 
Because, like, they're definitely going on the offensive here. Because, like, to them, they're probably thinking, oh, they're not outputting much offense with this. Um... I could also just go... No, nah, no, I want to get rid of the Fluttermane right away. Here, we'll go Terra Steel, Terra Blast. And... I might want to protect Clefairy, honestly. Yeah, let's protect Clefairy. Let's preserve it. And we'll see We'll see what they do with Flutter. If I had to guess, I'd, I'd say they're going Dazzling Gleam. Just because of the threat of redirection on the fields. Um... I think the threat of redirection is enough for them to click Dazzling. Well, they're not protecting. They're not tearing. If they're not bulky, they're gone. Even if they are, it's still a good roll in our favor. That was a crit on Malamar too. Oh, Water Spout, okay. Well, this is where Assault Vest comes in handy. Yeah. With friend guard on the field too. There's Terra Blast. Oh, is it sashed? It is sashed. Okay, so we're still fine. Um, at this point, I do think we uh, click follow me. I think we click follow me on Clefairy here. Actually, I might want to preserve Malamar. Yeah. Le okay. Let's uh, let's go Rillaboom into the Malamar slot. Let's try and preserve Malamar, and we'll just Moonblast. Mm. Yeah, we'll Moonblast into the Flutter. Cool. Okay. Pelipper. Okay, so we break. No, uh, Fluttermane had Sash. So Pelipper probably has Damp Rock. If I had to guess. Like, those are like the two items you play on Pelipper Focus Sash and Damp Rock. Uh, Rillaboom will outspeed Pelipper, and we can redirect any Hurricanes away. Assuming they have Hurricane. They might not. Should tank the Water Spout pretty okay, even in the rain with Friend Guard up. Moonblast into the Pelipper does about a fourth or so. They're not going to get Grassy Terrain Recovery, which is nice. Um, yeah, at this point, I think we... Uh, oh, they could Terra Blastoise here. I feel like they will. Like, we're outputting a lot of pressure right now on their Blastoise. Um... We also do have Fake Out, so if they have Protect... I like Faking Out the Blastoise. Or do I Fake Out? Hmm... No, we bring in Registeel. Here, let's Fake Out Blastoise and bring in Registeel for Clefairy. I think they're gonna either Terra or switch out Blastoise here. Um... Though they might hurt they might hurricane the Rillaboom, which is like the only downside of that play. If they have Hurricane, like they're probably gonna use it right here. Terra Dragon Blast Lois. Okay. Uh we are Terra Water. We're Terra Water ready steel. Yeah, okay. So that's kind of a like Hmm. Like, we, we do have, like, a good position here for Registeel, though. I'll say that. Like, especially, honestly, if we Terra Water. To, like, avoid Blastoise's, uh... Or not avoid them, but, like, you know... Weaken them. Um... I kind of like actually just bringing Malamar back in here. Oh, you know what? No, we, we've already terra my bad. Sorry, I forgot about that. Um, so I, I like bringing Malamar back in because if you ignore this Pokemon, it will stomp all over you. Basically, I like this. 
Okay, I like superpower on Blastoise and... Uh, in the rain... I don't know. Thing is, they can... Yeah, Water Spout will... Uh, see, I didn't. I didn't even know Blastoise got Water Spout. That's the issue. Like when I said there were no spread moves on this team, that kind of led to my decision. Or like there were spread moves, but there weren't a lot. There's like Fluttermane and uh, something else I forget. Yeah, I honestly did not. I didn't even know Blastoise got Water Spout. <laughs> yeah, this is game for them. This was this was hard to position around, I think. Just because Water Spout kind of made Clefairy not really like useful, besides for Friend Guard. Okay, so now we know, though. And now we know. They, they can just water spout. My only hope is that, like, they, uh, <laughs> they didn't PP up their water spouts. <laughs> and I think they've used, like, four of them. Or three, maybe. I think either way, we're done. So I tried my best to position Malamar well there, and I just did not. Uh, instead, I let Rillaboom die, and Registeel couldn't really do anything. Yeah, like, a lot of my decision-making here for, like, which Pokemon to bring... I don't know what I would have done differently. Because, like, it's not like Weirder does anything to, to, to Blastoise. Um, if they tear a dragon, like, Rillaboom's not doing much to Blastoise. Like, I'm actually really not sure what I would have done differently here. Uh, at least not yet. It'll probably dawn on me what I'm editing this later. But yeah, they could just water spout to win here. Yeah, GG. Okay, so, and they got the crit on Ready Steel. That was me just not knowing Blastoise got Water Spout. And honestly, even if I did, again, I'm not sure this team has the tools to handle it. Like, I think if I were to do things over again, like, if, if this were a best of three, I would go, go after the Blastoise immediately with Malamar. Like, I'd probably lead the same thing. Honestly, but, like, Terra Steel and, like, Superpower, the Blastoise... Because, like, we, we know that Blastoise can live... If we Terra Steel, we know it can live a Dazzling Gleam and a Water Spout twice. With Clefairy on the field. Like, it did less than half damage. So, like, if I were to do things over again there, I would definitely, like, just kind of go after the Blastoise with, uh, with Malamar there. And, like, Superpower probably to a KO is it. Like, after a plus one. So, yeah, and that would have given us a much better chance. All right, here's game four. So far, we're one and two. Let's see if we can even even it up here. Uh, we got Dragonite, Urshifu, Chiyu, Tornadus, Fluttermane, and Landorus Therian. Okay, so Chiyu is one of the reasons why I have Urshifu on this team. Like, like I really wanted a fast water type to deal with uh, Chiyu and Entei and stuff. Um... I think we do need to position it well, though. And also, Superpower deals decent damage, too, in the Chiyu. And we do have Assault Vest. Uh, if they if they send out a Chiyu Flutter lead, though, um, that could be an issue. For sure. Um, so I think what we do here is uh, we send out Malamar Urshifu. I think that's the play. Uh, so Urshifu guards... Uh, if they send out Chiyu Flutter, which... I know they very well might. Uh, Urshifu just kind of, like, guards. You know, it protects Malamar in this situation. Um, so I like that. Uh, do I like... I like Clefairy here. 
Uh, for the redirection, they do have a lot of spread, though. But they have, like, three spread moves, probably. Um, I like... Yeah, we'll go weirder Clefairy. We'll see how this works. So, we're, it, it, this is kind of weird, though, because we're sending out, uh, like, our two offensive threats, like, immediately, and we have just our support in the back. Uh, so I'm not sure this is going to work out too well, but we'll see. It just means we'll have to, like, adjust our game plan a little bit. Chiyu and Tornadus, okay. I still don't mind this. Um, like, we take neutral damage from Dark Pulse, uh... But I am, like, I, I feel like they're just going to immediately Terra or switch out. But, like, they don't have a lot in the back that can take a Surging Strikes. So, like, they just have, like, they have Dragonite in their own Urshifu. Um, so... I'm honestly okay with a superpower here plus... A Terra Water and a Surging Strikes, I think. Um, I might regret, honestly, like, yeah, they're switching out, but, like, we're doubling into that slot. But I did like Terra Water there. There's Fluttermane. Fluttermane's very dead. As a matter of fact, Fluttermane is dead, and Superpower is going to go into the Tornadus. Like, Terra Water, Choice Scarf, Urshifu absolutely just annihilates Flutter. And they're not even Tailwinding. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. For them to switch and not Tailwind, because like they're trying to delay it, I guess, makes sense. Yeah, Superpower is going to go into the Tornadus and give us a plus one. But they're going for Bleakwind, I guess, yeah. And they're missing Urshifu and hitting the Mon with Assault Vest, and it does like a fourth, if that. Superpower goes in there, but like that's okay because we do get a plus one in attack and defense. There's Dragonite. Okay, this is. Um. They have Chen Pao. No. If they don't have Chen Pao, like uh, this is probably either Band or Assault Vest. Dragonite. We're at plus one. I actually kind of like knock off on the Dragonite here. Because I'm pretty sure at this point with Assault Vest and with the plus one we have in defense, like the Dragonite can't knock out the Malamar. So I do like knock off here and I like preserving my Urshifu for the Chiyu in the back. So let's bring in Clefairy. Reduce that damage even more on Malamar. I like preserving the Urshifu for sure though here. Clefairy comes in. The Dragonite's going to tear a normal, probably. But that's okay, because there's no Chen Pao on the fields, And... And also we have Clefairy and plus one defense. So, like, I'm curious to see how much Malamar is going to take here. Not a ton. Sunny day. Yep, they were choice banded. Okay, so it's pretty huge. It means they don't have protect. It means we can safely superpower that slot plus redirect away whatever is coming. This is an easy call because all I have is Chiyu in the back, right? Which is also, which also takes, uh, super effective damage from superpower. follow me. I could definitely see why they set up Sunny Wind, though. Sunny Wind? What the... <laughs> what? Oh, Earthquake. Uh... We lived! That's huge. That's a clutch. Clutch. 
live there. I want to say, honestly, I want to say that, um, I think we protect Clefairy here no matter what. We let, we let Malamar go so we can get a free switch in here. They're probably going to go for Heat Wave. Um, but I will superpower that slot and I will protect Clefairy because I kind of need Clefairy there. Um, Urshifu, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Surging Strikes will KO even in the sun. And it's full health, which means I don't think Clefairy can kill it with Clefairy on the field. Or, sorry, I don't think Chi Yu can kill it with Clefairy on the field. They're going for Dark Pulse on Clefairy. And Bleak Wind Storm, let's see if it hits here. 80% accurate. It it's Malamar. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so <laughs> that's really unfortunate. I wasn't playing for that at all. Like I was expecting Malamar to go down that turn so we can bring Urshfu back in. Um And we didn't even see Weeder come out. We might still, but yeah. Uh, let's knock off you and... as well Moonblast you too. Okay, yeah. All right, we're two and two. Honestly, I think we... Um, assuming they didn't have, like, overheat, which you would have thought they'd go for that. I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, but Dark Pulse into the Clefairy was an interesting choice because Clefairy resists Dark Pulse. Um, so that's interesting. But I think we had that game either way because Urshfu comes in and Surging Strikes. I think even in the rain, they don't have access... Sorry, even in the sun, they don't have access to their Terra. So we just come in and Surging Strikes with Terra Water and the, the Chi Yu just goes down. Um, assuming it wasn't like Citrus or anything. If it was Citrus, maybe it lives. But... Maybe. That's a big maybe. Uh, but I can always just, like, uh, helping hand it as well. I have Clefairy on the field. So I think whatever whatever they did there, we were probably going to gonna take it. All right, game five. Let's see if we can go above 500 here. We're two and two. All right, we got Chen Pao, Entei, Ogre Pond, Fluttermane, Raging Bolt, Dragonite. Seen a lot of Dragonite. Makes sense, honestly. Um, so, again, like, Intimidate isn't doing a lot here. Only two mons on this team really care about Intimidate. Uh, could send... I think this is another... Another... Um, I'm a little bit wary of Urshifu here, because, like, they do have Water Ogre Pond. Um... <clears throat> I'm also a little bit wary of Rillaboom here because, like, Fake Out doesn't do a lot. Like, Fake Out doesn't do a lot into this team. It, again, Fake Out only affects one, two Pokemon on this team if Chen Bao Terra Ghosts. Um, let's see. Let's see. What do I want to do? Um, I do like a Malamar lead, again, even if we do Terra Steel. I do like Malamar Clefairy. If they send out Dragonite, we know they're probably going to go for Extreme Speed. Um, yeah, I like this. I like Ursh and Rilla in the back here. Um, yeah, like they can go for Extreme Speed, but like we always have Terra Steel, which is nice. Uh, Terra Steel does resist uh, like all the priority on this team except for Sucker, uh, Sucker Punch. So I like that. I like Terra Steel. Uh, the only way they can get around help, uh, not helping in. Uh, the only way they can get around follow me from Clefairy is with Extreme Speed. Yeah, there's Shempao Dragonite. Okay, this is Terra Steel plus follow me. Plus, I honestly might want to superpower the Dragonite. I can see Terra Normal coming. But let's let's see if they actually do it. I like super powering into that slot anyway. Honestly.
Like, I'm not sure they'd ever sacred into Malamar. And I think we moon blast to break Chen Pao's sash. Yep, they're going for they're going for probably Terra Normal, which means superpower was the play. Yeah, and also Terra Steel as well. So like they're probably going for E Speed. I would imagine they're going for E Speed onto the Malamar. It's an example of the type of, of pressure that Clefairy puts on the field as well, because like extreme speed, if if the Pokemon using extreme speed is faster than the Pokemon using follow me, then extreme speed will outspeed it. Oh, they went for Clef. Okay, interesting. And Ice Spinner in the Clef. Interesting. So they doubled on the Clefairy. Okay. Uh, not quite. Okay, well, we did get a plus one from that. So, again, they ignored Malamar, but that might just be bad for them. Uh, they're locked in here. They're locked into extreme speed, but Fake Out will... Uh, Fake Out will take care of that. Another option here also is, like, to just kind of ignore extreme speed at this point and only focus on the Chen Pao. Hmm. Definitely options. Definitely options here. Uh, I do like sending out Ursh here, I think. Just because sending out uh, Rillaboom into a Chen Pao feels weird. Um. Yeah, like, they, they probably go for E-Speed here onto... Uh, onto Ursh. Like, they could double up on it, but the, the Urshifu will outspeed the Chen Pao, and it resists Sucker Punch, so it won't die. Um, Sorry, yeah, it does resist Sucker Punch, yeah. So, we just kind of, like... I think we double the Pow. I think we double the Pow, because Malamar does not, does not Dragonite right now. It really doesn't care about Dragonite. Yep, they go for the Ursh. Mm. Okay, there's Surging Strikes. Yeah, this probably won't kill. Oh, yeah. Chenpao might actually have some bulk on it, honestly. Eh, not really, actually. It's probably your standard Sash spread. Sacred Sword into the Malamar. Dealt a bunch. More than I expected, to be honest. Honestly, with with Pow gone, with Pow gone, I don't know if Extreme Speed KOs Malamar right now. And we have Ursh there to protect it. Raging Bolt does have the priority Electro, not Electro Clap, Thunder Clap. Um. Okay, I, I kind of do like... Um, let's see, we have Rillaboom in the back. So we do have that fake out pressure. Um, I don't know, they're in a really good position right now. Like, they're in a very good position right now. I think we... I also don't want to remove Malamar from the fields. Let's see if they go for the Thunderclap onto Ursh. Actually, well, they would just go for Extreme Speed. Because they know that the Ursh is Scarf, right? Because they outsped their Chen Pao. So, like, they probably, like... Probably feel safe just Extreme Speeding plus Thunderclapping the, the Malamar. They go for E-Speed onto, yeah, the Rillaboom. And they probably Thunderclap the Malamar. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure how close that came to KOing. At this point... 
at this point, I think the battle is pretty much over because, like, we don't have much resources. I think them doubling the Clefairy on turn one was a very interesting play, but it makes sense. Like, it makes sense if you're them because, like, it got rid of, like, the Disruptor. You know, like it got rid of the redirector. Uh, that really would have helped me here with friend guard, especially. It really would have helped me in the end game. So, like them getting rid of that right away, honestly, kudos to them. And I just don't have. I didn't bring the tools to deal with uh, with this particular duo. So, like they can always just thunderclap. But yeah, I guess we surging strikes or eh, yeah, they can just thunderclap. They could double on the Urshifu, but let's see if they do. Uh, I think the play was to fake out the Dragonite. Which seems weird, but like... It might have killed it. <laughs> at least. <laughs> yeah, that was admittedly kind of a misplay, but I think the game was over anyway. So I think my my final thoughts on Malamar. Very fun. Very fun to use Malamar and to get those boosts. Like honestly, like just getting a boost every turn while attacking is super fun. Uh, especially with a move like Superpower. Like a like fighting a fighting move is super nice into a lot of the meta. But yeah, we kind of. Uh, We kind of butchered this one a bit. I think it's just it's just hard to deal with like overwhelming offense like Chimpad Dragonite with Malamar. Like it was just a little bit too much. And they did go after Clefairy uh, at the start, but like I said, I think that was a good play by them. Um, it, it was a play that I didn't really foresee, honestly. Like, and protecting Clefairy there would have been a massive play for me, <laughs> but it is what it is. Um. Yeah, if I protect turn one there, which, like, I don't know how many times out of ten I would have done that. Maybe, like, if... Maybe in game two... But then they see it coming, right? So, like, they might not do that. I don't know. I mean, like... Closed team sheet is, like, very... It can be it can be volatile sometimes. Not like I don't know what that team was, was you know, packing, but... Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty common team right now in the meta, but... I think we just didn't quite have what it took to like handle the sort of overwhelming offense that they were they were throwing at me. So it is what it is. Malamar is very fun. And yeah. Give Malamar a try sometime. Okay, so to recap, in game one, Malamar shone immediately by getting the boost it needed and it just became unstoppable. Weedir helped boost it initially as well by skill swapping Intimidate and proccing Contrary on our own Malamar, just like we drew it up. Game 2 was against a variation of the team that won in Portland a few weeks ago. A crucial Icicle Crash flinch on Malamar from Chen Pao was pretty devastating and I wasn't able to play around it, and I lost. Game 3, I underestimated my opponent's Blastoise. I didn't know it got access to Water Spout at all. If I did, I would have gone right after it immediately with Malamar. Instead, I let myself get into a weird spot and couldn't position my team around the damage being dealt. Game 4, Urshfu played a huge role in protecting Malamar from a potential Chiyu Fluttermane duo. After forcing Chiyu off the field and knocking out their Fluttermane, Malamar's boost as well as knocking off Dragonite's Choice Band let us live its attack and knock it out, and the game was ours from there. Game 5, I really struggled to keep up with the opponent's overwhelming offense. Dragonite and Chen Pao were just a little bit too much for me. They eliminated my Clefairy right away, which was a really smart play that really stunted my team defensively in the late game and removed a lot of options that I could have had. Hey, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. Malamar is incredibly fun to use once it gets its boost from Superpower, and honestly, I wouldn't run it any other way. Once again, be sure to comment down below with your choice of Pokemon for me to use next week, and I'll see you next time on Community Chaos.